Today we'll look at how you can add motion blur to an object in Affinity Photo. You can start with an image like this and turn it into this. So I'm here in Affinity Photo and I've opened this image of a dirt bike here. It's a good candidate to add motion blur to. Now today our method is going to be based on the live filter called motion blur. Let me show you how it works by itself. I'll just draw a circle here. So to add motion blur to something, we can select live filters down here. I'll click live filters. And then up here we have the motion blur filter. So I'll click motion blur. And we basically have two options here, the radius and the rotation. So I'll increase the radius and you can see the effect that's happening. It's kind of pulling our image apart in two directions. You can change the direction of it. So now it's 45 degree angle. You can make it 90 for up and down. We'll put it back to zero so it's left and right. Now, like many controls in Affinity Photo, there's a maximum value you can adjust the slider to, but you can actually type in higher values here. So instead of 100, I'll type in 200. I'll hit enter and you can see it actually went bigger. So just remember if you're doing something and you want these controls to go higher than they do, usually you can make it bigger, especially if it's a pixel value. So this in a nutshell is how the motion blur effect works. Now in this example, I want the rider and the bike to just be by themselves. I created a mask ahead of time to do that. Let me turn on the mask. So this is what it looks like here. To quickly explain how I did that, I'll turn off the mask. I used the selection brush tool here and then I selected the rider. This is the hardest part. I'll just briefly do it now. And then I click the mask layer button. So I'll click that. And that's how we can isolate the rider. Now, of course, it didn't do a very good job there because I did it very quickly. Let me undo that. But that's the method you would go through. And with a shape like this, you want to make sure you get all those negative spaces. For example, the places where you can see the sky between the arms. But because we're going to be using this with the blur filter, you don't need to be as super strict as you otherwise would. So don't worry about getting things like spokes and all these other little details in there. So I'm going to duplicate my layer here, Control J. I'll call this top one blur. So for this top layer blur, if I turn on the mask, this is my isolated subject here. For the bottom layer, we don't need the mask, but I'll just leave it there in case we need to restore it later. So let's add the motion blur filter. So with this blur layer selected, I'll click live filters and I'll click motion blur. And now as I drag, I'm getting the effect there. And you can choose how far to drag it. I think there's pretty good. So I'll put it to about 90 pixels. So before, after, before, after. Now we don't actually want everything to be blurred. The blur is going to be where our object used to be. So we want these leading edges to be sharp. I'm gonna add another mask above the blur filter. So I'll click mask layer. I'll make it so it's above the motion blur there. And now I'll select my brush. I'll choose a softer brush and let's make it black. And if I paint on my mask here, this will erase the blur effect. So I'm gonna erase the blur effect on all these leading edges here. Maybe on his arm, in here, his legs here. And if you erase too much, you can always put it back in by selecting white and painting it back in. Now this is mostly an artistic decision. You don't have to be super realistic with the laws of physics here and like optics. You're trying to do something that fits your image the best. So here we have before, after, before, after. Now something you can also try doing is adding multiple blur filters. So with the motion blur selected here, I'll just press control J and that will duplicate it. And you can see it actually increased the blur a little bit. So we have two blur filters working together. I can press it again. And now we have even more. And if you want to fine tune it, you can go back to your mask, select your brush. Maybe around here, I want to clean it up. It depends on the type of effect you're going for. And here we have our final result. Before, after, before, after. You saw me using two masks in one group in this video. The way multiple masks interact together can be a little complex. I made an entire video about this subject. If you want to check it out, I put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.